Hello YouTube, today we are going to measure the elastic properties and internal friction of a rectangular sample using the RFDA basic system. So uh, what we are going to do is we are going to use this small hammer to uh, tap the sample and we are going to record a vibration signal and using this microphone. We will send a vibration signal to the computer where we will analyze the vibration signal and calculate the uh, elastic properties. So the first thing we do is we start out the uh, RFDA software. We will choose measurement and we will give in the weight and dimensions of the sample. So from this sample, that's 148 point. Four eight. The length is eighteen millimeters. Width is twenty four point nine nine, and thickness is eight point nine three millimeters. In the screen, we also see the node distance. That's the dif distance between the two support wires. And it's important that the sample is supported in this way um, because uh, this way it's supported in the uh, vibration uh, nodes of the flexural vibration which we are going to measure. Okay, now we just press measure and we tap the sample. So in these two screens, uh, we see the, in the first screen we see the uh, vibration signal that we recorded using the microphone. In the second screen, we see the uh, frequency spectrum with one uh, large peak and around 7,900 hertz. This is the flexural uh, vibration, and we see the internal friction. So now. We tell the software that we measure the flexural vibration and we select the correct vibration. Now the software calculates the Young's modulus and the error that was calculated on the Young's modulus. So uh, we also want to measure the shear modulus and the pulsar ratio. Therefore, we need to induce the torsion vibration mode. And to be able to do that, we have to change the setup a little bit. So now we, set up, now we um, support the sample on two fish wires th this way. And what we're going to do to measure the torsion vibration mode is support the sample in a cross uh, like this. So let's change the setup a little bit. We support the sample in a cross. We position the microphone in one of the corners. And we're going to tap the sample in the opposite corner. So let's do that. Now again we see the vibration signal that we recorded. The frequency spectrum is a little bit different. We see two peaks this time. The first peak is uh, again around 7900 hertz. That's the reflectual uh, frequency. And we see another big peak at around 10,000 hertz. That's the torsion frequency. Now to calculate the shear modulus and Poisson ratio, we have to say that we measure in flexural and torsion. We, we select the correct torsion frequency. <coughs> and the software calculates the Young's modulus, shear modulus and Poisson ratio. So the RFDA basic system is a very um, efficient and fast way uh, to measure the elastic properties of samples. Now let's have a look at the reproducibility of the measurement results. So we're going to um, do a couple of measurements and see how the uh, noise modulus, shear modulus and Poisson ratio change. So let's do another measurement. We see again that we have about the same uh, Young's modulus, shear modulus, and Poisson ratio. Um, between measurements, you will have a maximum difference between uh, 
the, for, or for the elastic properties of about uh, 1%. So let's do some other measurements. Again, we have about the same results. Again, let's do that one more last time. Again, we see uh, about the same results. So uh, we have very good reproducibility for the elastic properties using this uh, setup. Now let's have a look at some uh, other samples which we can measure. This is another rectangle bar, so a bit uh, smaller than, than the one we have measured. And the smallest we can measure is a rectangle bar like this with a length of about 2 centimeters. If we go any, any smaller, it's possible to measure smaller samples, but then it becomes physically very difficult to, to tap the sample and record the vibration signal. This is a um, cylindrical rod. It's also possible to measure um, with this uh, setup. And uh, disc shape sample. Now, um, let's look at some uh, materials. Um, what's important is that you can, that the material is stiff enough. So that when we tap the sample, you have uh, a vibration signal. Basically, you have to hear some kind of ping. Um, that you can record. If we are going to uh, tap, for example, a rubber type material with, which is not so stiff, um, we will not hear any ping and it will be very difficult to measure uh, this type of material. So, very stiff materials or stiff materials like uh, this is a fiber reinforced polymer, it's possible to measure this, or maybe some glass or ceramic material or a metal, it's no problem to measure this. Another example is uh, this uh, aluminum foam, very porous material, also possible to measure with uh, this setup. And the big advantage we have over other techniques is when you tap this sample, we only uh, apply very weak forces onto the sample. So you won't crush any of the porosities. And uh, therefore, we will also have a very good reproducibility of the elastic properties when you measure uh, this type of uh, material using the RVA basic system. Here's another example, very porous uh, ceramic material. This is a diesel particle filter. Um, also very difficult to measure with other techniques, but uh, we get very good results with uh, the RVA basic system. Last example is this uh, refractory brick, bigger sample. Measuring bigger samples is uh, no problem. Uh, maybe you have to use a little uh, bit of, uh, of a bigger hammer, but uh, that's no problem. Um, so bit measuring bigger samples is, uh, is no problem. Um, we can also measure this type of uh, material at high temperature. So then we use the same type of setup. Of course, we are going to use uh, different materials in our high temperature setup. Um, and then we, we put the same setup inside of a furnace and perform measurements uh, of the elastic properties and internal friction um, during heating and cooling. So normally we um, measure the elastic properties every two minutes uh, while heating, during heating and cooling. And this way you can map out the elastic properties and thermal friction of the material um, during heating and cooling. So for now that was it. So uh, I would like to thank you for your attention and until next time.